Oh boy. Okay. Let's get into green. Uh, before we do, I just want to give a quick reminder that we've recently launched Equipped Creatures, merch for magic fans, paying tribute to some of the most iconic places, terms, people, characters, cards, um, keywords, colloquial phrases, um, some memes. Uh, definitely check it out. We're really proud of all the designs we have up on the store right now, and we're excited to put out more as we design them. Uh, bonfire.com slash store slash equip is the place to go to check out all of the merch that we've designed and put up so far. Uh, they're available in sweaters, crop tops, pullovers, long sleeve. Um, we've got some mug, a mug even, this nice little Elish Norn mug. Definitely check it out. We'd really appreciate it if you did. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make some really nice merch that I wanted to wear. You will see me wearing it soon. I've got an order on the way. Check out Equipped Creatures on Bonfire. And let's jump into our next color. Green is up next. Um, we're kicking things off with Ancient Imperiosaur. Five red red. Red red. Five green green for a 6-6 six, six dinosaur creature with Convoke. So as a reminder, Convoke means your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting it pays for one colorless or one mana of that creature's color. Ancient Imperiosaur has Trample and Ward 2. Ancient Imperiosaur enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters on it for each creature that convoked it. So if you tap five creatures to play this creature and pay two green mana, this becomes a an 11-11? Wow. Okay. Starting off strong in green. Uh, these are all alphabetical, so there's no rhyme or reason um, for why we're starting here. It's just alphabetical, and we're kicking off real strong. That is intense. Uh, next up, we have Arachnoid Adaptation. One green for an instant target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains reach until end of turn. Untap it. This is going to be baller in the Selesnia toxic deck that is currently storming standard right now um atraxas fall one and a green for a sorcery destroy target artifact battle enchantment or creature with flying um that's pretty cool it sucks to pay all of that money and attention and time into a battle just to have someone pay two mana to destroy it um, that's pretty powerful. Next up, we have Blighted Burgeoning. Two and a green for an enchantment aura. Enchant land. When Blighted the Burgeoning enters the battlefield, incubate two. So incubate, as a reminder, means create an incubator token with two, because it says incubate two. Uh, one, one counters on it. And then you pay two, transform this artifact. It transforms into a zero, zero Phyrexian artifact creature. But because it was an incubate two... It's going to be a 2-2 two -two artifact creature. Um, and the rest of Blighted Burgeoning says, whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of any color. Pretty good. Uh, next up, we have Bonded Herd Beast. Oh, cute. Four and a green for a 4-5 beast with four. Oh, no. It transforms. Four and a red Phyrexian transform. Bonded Herd Beast activate as a sorcery. Um, again, you can pay Phyrexian mana with a color or two life, and it transforms into Plated Kiln Beast, a 7-5 Phyrexian Beast with Menace. That's scary. Uh, next up, we have Chomping Kavu. Three and a green for a 3-3 three, three Kavu with backup one. So backup, as a reminder, means when this creature enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. If that's another target, if that's another creature, it gains the following ability until end of turn. This creature can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Um, so that's pretty cool. You 
can gift something else pseudo unblockable for a turn. Uh, then we've got Converter Beast. Three and a green for an 0-1 Phyrexian Beast. When Converter Beast enters the battlefield, incubate five. Wow. That's pretty... Pretty aggressive. Uh, next up, we have Copper Host Crusher. Six green green for an 8-8 eight, eight Phyrexian Bear Rhino with Trample and Hexproof. Wow. They're going hard on this green Stompy. Next up, we have Cosmic Hunger. Oh, look at that co that uh, Phyrexianized Coma in the background. That's crazy. One in a green for an instant target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature, Planeswalker, or Battle. That's pretty good. Nice little bite spell. Uh, next up, we have Crystal Carapace. Three in a green for an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, and has ward two. It also has cycling two, so you can discard this and draw a card. This will be pretty good in that Selesnya Toxic deck too, I think. Although four mana is pretty expensive. Uh, next up, we have Deep Root Wayfinder. One in a green for a two, three Merfolk Scout. When Wayfinder deals combat damage to a player or battle, surveil one. Then you may return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Interesting. So you surveil one, you can put the land directly into your graveyard and then immediately return it to the battlefield tapped. Hmm. Nice little way to cheat mana onto the battlefield. Uh, Doomscar Warrior is next. Two green green for a 4-3 human warrior with backup one. Um, and trample. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, look at that many cards from the top of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That's not bad. It's like pseudo collected company. Next up, we have Fertilid's Favor. Three and a green for an instant. Target player searches their library for a basic land card, puts it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffles. Put two 1-1 one -one counters on up to one target artifact or creature. Not, not terrible, but not great. Um, next up, we have Glistening Dawn. Two green green for a sorcery. Incubate X twice, where X is the number of lands you control. Wow. Okay. So if you play this on turn like five or six, um, you can essentially incubate five twice. Or if you've been cheating lands onto the battlefield, you can incubate more than that. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Next up, we have Notvold Hermit. A three and a green for a 4-4 four, four troll. Pay five and a blue Phyrexian to transform it into Chrome Host Hulk. A 5-5 five, five Phyrexian troll with whenever Chrome Host Hulk attacks, up to one other target creature has base power and toughness. 5-5 five, five until end of turn. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, then we've got Herbology Instructor. One in a green for a 1-3 Tree Folk Druid. When Herbology Instructor enters the battlefield, gain three life. That's pretty nice. Two mana for gain three. Pay six and a black to transform... Or a black Phyrexian, sorry. To transform Herbology Instructor into Malady Invoker. A 3-3 three, three Phyrexian Tree Folk. When this creature transforms, target creature and opponent controls gets minus zero, minus X until end of turn, where X is Malady Invoker's power. So it just gets minus three. Minus O, minus three. Unless that, like, compounds. Like, if it transforms and then you put, like, a buff, like a boon on it, and make its power like six. It says it gets minus zero minus X until end of turn. So I'm assuming it's constantly checking what Malady Invoker's power is. Intriguing. I'm not sure if that works or not, but that's intriguing. Uh, next up, we have our first battle in green. So again, hello, Ghastly Circus. How's it going? 
Um, so as a reminder, battles are a new card type. Uh, this battle subtype is Siege. All of the battles in March of the Machine are Sieges. So the specific rules text on these cards are Siege specific. Battles in the future might have different subtypes, so they might come with different rules. Um, so Invasion of Ikoria is X green green. Okay, sorry. Uh, a Siege... Siege rules are, as a siege enters, choose an opponent to protect it. You and others may attack it. When it is defeated, exile it, then cast it transformed. So Invasion of Ikoria says X green green to cast. When Invasion of Ikoria enters the battlefield, search your library and or graveyard for a non-human creature card with mana value X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle. It has six um, counters on it. Once you defeat it, it turns into Zilortha Apex of Ikoria, an 8-8 dinosaur legendary creature with reach. For each non-human creature you control, you may have that creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Wow. Interesting. That's pretty powerful. Uh, Ghastly, doing great. How about yourself? I'm having a great day. Thank you so much for asking. We're currently going through the new uh, magic set card by card. Uh, we're a little over halfway done now. So we're just looking at these new cards, having a lot of fun. I hope your, your day continues to be great. Yeah, March of the Machine does look great. Real fun. Lots of cool, fun things in it. It feels a little, like, messy. Like, there's a lot going on. Um... But I don't mind that, I don't think. One messy set. People get a hold of these sets and they understand them a lot faster. Um, I'm new to magic, uh, but I enjoy the new cards. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm glad you're you're into it. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people get a handle on things a lot faster than than maybe I expect them to, so even though there's a lot going on in March of the Machine and there's a lot of different things happening, I think that um, people are going to get get the idea and learn how to play these cards um, to their peak efficiency pretty fast. And, and we get to play with this set all through the summer. So um, I'm a bit obsessed, to be honest. I pre-ordered my first ever Commander Precon deck, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, which one did you get? Um, I'm madly obsessed um, we, we don't stream on Twitch very often. It's just a nice place to, uh, growing threat. Ooh, nice. Um, Twitch is just a nice place to, to talk to some people randomly, but also to, you know, record and get, um, footage. Most of our stuff is on YouTube. Um, here, I'll just do one of these in chat, chat. Oh, oh wait, my thing's not on. I didn't turn my commands on hold on hold up uh i guess i could just do this why is my caps lock on um we do most of our content on youtube um if you're interested in the story we just finished our entire series of narrated audiobooks for the march of the machine story so if you haven't read or found a way to ingest that story, definitely check that out. Um, we also recently launched our um, merch line, which is going to be, uh, which you'll find in the links um, on all of our YouTube videos. Um, so yeah, we don't stream on Twitch very much, especially Magic. We do some some random games and Let's Plays sometimes, but... Most of our stuff is on YouTube or social media in general. Lots of Twitter discussions, uh, mainly focused on like standard and competitive constructed formats. But uh, we do love ourselves some commander as well. So I appreciate you stopping by. I love to meet and talk to new magic players, old magic players as well. Cheers. Um, all right, let's check out the next one. So the next one is another battle, battle of invasion of Ixalan. 
is one and a green for a battle. Uh, when Invasion of Ixalan enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That's really good. Two mana, look at the top five. Um, this is going to replace, I think, the Vorak for sure in a lot of the constructed um, decks that play that. Let's see what happens when you flip it. So it has four counters on it. When you defeat it, it turns into Belligerent Regisaur. 4-3 Dinosaur with Trample. Whenever you cast a spell, Belligerent Regisaur gains Indestructible until end of turn. That's pretty fun. I think the battle ability to look at the top five cards of your library is pretty great. I think that's going to be super useful. Um, next up, we have Invasion of Muraganda. Four and a green for a battle siege. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. It has six counters on it. When you defeat it, it turns into Primordial Plasm. A 4-4 four, four ooze. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature gets plus two, plus two, and loses all abilities until end of turn. Nice. So you can shut down one of their more powerful things. That's kind of fun. Not really worth it, but it's kind of fun. Uh, next up, we have Invasion of Chandelar, a mythic battle. Three green green. When Invasion of Chandelar enters the battlefield, return up to three target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. That's crazy. And then it has four counters on it. When you defeat it, it turns into Leyline Surge. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield for free. For free. Um, that's pretty crazy. It does say you may put, which means that it subverts anything that has a casting trigger. Um... But a lot of green stuff has ETB triggers, enter the battlefield triggers, rather than casting triggers. So it shouldn't be too harmful. Um, but it does, you have to keep in mind that it does say put it onto the battlefield rather than cast it for free. Uh, which means you're not going to get those casting triggers. You will get the enters the battlefield triggers though. That's pretty cool. That's, that's worth the mythic. Um, five mana plus four to kill it. And then flip it and you get to do this every upkeep that's pretty great uh next up is invasion of zendikar um three and a green when invasion of zendikar enters the battlefield search your library for up to two basic land cards put them onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle so turn four you get you've got, got six mana at minimum that's pretty good um and it turns into awakened skyclave 4-4 four, four, Elemental Creature with Vigilance and Haste. As long as Awakened Skyclave is one is on the battlefield, it's a land in addition to its other types. Add one mana of any color. Tap it to add one mana. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, Next up, we have Iridescent Blade Master. One in a green for a 2-2 Elf Warrior Creature with three in a green activated ability. Blade Master gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. That's pretty cool. I like that. I love the Kaladesh aesthetic so much. It's really neat looking. Uh, next up, we have Kami of Whispered Hopes. Two and a green for a 1-1 one, one spirit creature. If one or more 1-1 one, one counters would be put onto a permanent you control, that many plus one 1-1 one, one counters are put on that permanent instead. You can tap Kami of Whispered Hopes, add X mana of any one color where X is Kami of Whispered Hopes power. So it's a bit of a mana dork, but also a counters duplicator. I like that. Uh, Overgrown Pest. That art is so funny looking. I love it. I love it. Overgrown Pest is two and a green for a 2-2 Pest. When Overgrown Pest enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a land or double face card from among them and put that card into your hand. 
with the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Um, I mean, this is just Contagion Vorak, but better. I still think I like the... Um, which was it? Was it Ixalan? Yeah, I still think I like Ixalan, the invasion of Ixalan better. Um, but Overgrown Pest is fine. It, it definitely will will play the role of the Contag Contagion Vorak, which has become quite popular lately. Uh, next up, we have Ozolith the Shattered Spire. One in a green for a legendary artifact. Uh, if one or more 1-1 one, one counters will be put on any artifact or creature you control, that many plus 1-1 one, one, one counters are put on it instead. So it does the um, counter anthem. One in a green, tap it to put a 1-1 one, one counter on target artifact or creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery. And Ozolith the Shattered Spire has cycling for 2. That's pretty good. You could have a couple copies of this in your deck. Um to heighten the chance of drawing it and then if you draw a duplicate uh you can cycle away the extras uh next up we have placid rotten tail this look at this cute little guy one green for a one one fungus rat with vigilance pay two and a green to exile placid rotten tail from your graveyard and put two one one counters on target creature activate only as a sorcery that's cute. I like that. I like that. Uh, next up, we have Pelucranos Reborn. Green, green, green for a 4-5 Hydra creature with reach. I'm sorry, 3 mana for a 4-5 with reach? That's insane. Um, then you can pay 6 and a white Phyrexian to transform it into Pelucranos Engine of Ruin. A 6-6 six, six Phyrexian Hydra with Reach and Lifelink. When Pelucranos or another non-token Hydra you control dies, create a 3-3 three, three green and white Phyrexian Hydra creature token with Reach and a 3-3 three, three green and white Phyrexian Hydra token with Lifelink. Wow. Um, that's pretty great. That is scary. Scary. Uh, Portent Tracker is next. One in a green for a 1-1 one, one Seder Scout. I like the Phyrexian symbol in the smoke in the back there. Um, tap Port Portent Tracker to untap target land. Pretty good. Tap it to choose target battle. If an opponent protects it, remove a defense counter from it. Otherwise, put a defense counter on it. Activate only as a sorcery. Um, that's all right. I like the tapping it to untap a land. That's not too bad. I kind of just wish it tapped for mana, but... Um, next up, we have Ravenous Sailback. Four and a green for a 3-4 Dinosaur. Dinosaur. When Ravenous Sailback enters the battlefield, choose one. Either Sailback gains haste until end of turn, or destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's pretty good. I like that. Next up, we have Sand Stalker Moloch. Moloch. One green green for a 4-2 lizard creature with flash. When Sand Stalker Moloch enters the battlefield, if an opponent casts a blue or black spell this turn, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Lots of text on these cards, but... We're getting through them. We're getting through them. Um, I like this. It's pretty good. It's that uh, anti-blue or black. Like we talked about in the last um, color, this seems to be a cycle of anti-dual color cards. Um, yeah, I like it. Seed of Hope is one green for an instant. Mill two cards. You may put a permanent card from among the milled cards into your hand. Gain two life. This is a very touching moment in the story. Uh, next up, we have Serpent Blade Assailant. Two and a green for a 2-1 Elf Warrior with backup one 
and its ability is death touch i like that i like that a lot storm the seed core is next two green green for a sorcery distribute four one one counters among up to four target creatures you control creatures you control gain vigilance and trample until end of turn that's not bad I love this art and there's a lot of discussion about this art from this artist on Twitter. So everyone's been eyeing and drooling over this art for a long time. And I was worried it was going to be put on a mediocre card. Um, and this one's a little bit better than mediocre. I think it's not too bad. Streetwise Negotiator is next. One in a green for an O2 Cat Citizen with backup one. This creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So it's got butt fighting. Um, I like that. That's all right. Next up, we've got Tandem Takedown. One green green for an instant. Up to two target creatures you control each get plus one plus O until end of turn. Then they each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature, planeswalker, or battle. So this is like a dual fight spell. I like that. Oh, well, it's not even a fight. It's a dual bite spell. I like that even more. That's pretty good. I like how this monster is just like eating Luca. And Vivian's just like shooting Luca. That's fun. Uh, next up, we've got Tangled Skyline. Four and a green for an enchantment. When Tangled Skyline enters the battlefield, you gain five life and incubate five. Uh, Phyrexians you control have reach. That's not bad. It's expensive, but it's not that bad. It really like locks up the end game if you manage to get there. Uh, Timberland Ancient. Or a green green for a 6-5 tree folk creature with reach and trample. And this guy's got four cycling. So again, each color has a basic land. or well, not a basic land. A land cycling card. Um, this one might be the best one out of all of them, actually. So far, the other ones haven't been very playable. I haven't really liked. The red one was okay. Um, this one's probably the most playable version of all five so far. Just a 6-5 with Reach and Trample for 6 mana. Um, it is important to note that the Forest Cycling says Forest Card, not Basic Forest Land. Um, so you can find anything that has Forest in its type line, um, including Dual Lands and Pain Lands and such. So it's nice to have a card that's useful as a front face, but also useful as a cycler. Um, next up, we have Tribute to the World Tree. Green, green, green for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two 1-1 one, one counters on it. Okay, that's powerful. That's scary powerful. Um, Vengeant Earth is next. One and a green for an instant. Target creature or land you control becomes a 4-4 elemental creature with haste in addition to its other types until end of turn it must be blocked this turn if able wow um next up we have our last of the five praetors vorinclex is three green green for a six six legendary creature praetor uh with trample and reach when vorinclex enters the battlefield search your library for up to two forest cards Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. And you can pay six green green to exile Vorinclex and transform it. It transforms into the Grand Evolution, a saga that reads, Chapter 1, mill 10 cards, put up to two creature cards from among them, from among the milled cards onto the battlefield. Chapter 2, distribute seven 1-1 one, one counters among any number of target creatures you control. Chapter 3, until end of turn, um, creatures you control gain pay 1. This creature fights target creature you don't control. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, I mean, that's really powerful, too. We're going to have to have a discussion at the end of this to decide 
Um, <coughs> which of these praetors is the most powerful? We'll have to do a ranking. Um, that is a little crazy. Uh, next up, we have War Historian. A two and a green for a 3-3 human monk with reach. War Historian has indestructible as long as it has attacked a battle this turn. Um, it's kind of comical that they put that text on a historian who has to attack battles. Uh, next up, we have Wary Thespian. Oh, look at all these cool Phyrexian symbols. Uh, one and a green for a 3-1 cat druid. When wary thespian enters the battlefield or dies, surveil one. Nice, nice little nod to the cabaretti there. I like that. Wildwood escort. I love wildwood creatures. Four and a green for a 3-3 elf warrior. When Wildwood enters the battlefield, return target creature or battle card from your graveyard to your hand. If Wildwood Escort would die, exile it instead. Um, it's it's a little more expensive than some of the previous Wildwood cards we've seen. Um, but it's not bad. And then finally in green, we have Realm and Realm... Ren and Realm Breaker. I can't even say it. Ren and Realm Breaker. One green green... For a four loyalty legendary planeswalker Ren. It's the static ability. Lands you control have tap. Add one mana of any color. Amazing static ability. Plus one up to one target land you control becomes a 3-3 three, three elemental creature with vigilance, hexproof, and haste until your next turn. It's still a land. So that's really important until your next turn because you can turn a land into a defender and then leave it there without attacking um minus two mill three cards then put a permanent card from among the milled cards into your hand minus seven you get an emblem with you may play lands and cast permanent spells from straight from your graveyard just straight from it um i mean that's what else was there that uh, ancient Imperiosaur was is really scary as far as big boomers go um Pelucranos was another very terrifying card where was it Pelucranos where did you go Pelucranos is very scary especially the backside of it um I think that's terrifying. At the end of the day, I think that Ren and Realm Breaker is probably the most potent um, green card in this set. I really like the art on, on a lot of these. The Tribute to the World Tree is amazing. Um, I love this little guy. Guys, look at him. Just It's just adorable. Love it. Um, 